Big Bean Cafe, and this uh, interview is going to be with Mayor Dane Walling. Dane, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Paul. Hello, everyone. It's been a while since we've sat down and talked on to meet the candidates, hasn't it? Right. <laughs> I'm up for re-election, so it's been almost four years. Four years. Wow. Well, you know, we always started out with tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Well, I think you all know, I think you all know that I'm born and raised right here in Flint. Graduate of Flint Central High School, where my grandfather uh, also went to Flint Central back in 1935 and graduated. My wife, Carrie, and I were raising our two kids uh, right here in this community to go to Flint Community Schools and um, had a chance to go to Michigan State University. I worked in the nonprofit, uh, private, public sectors, and professional uh, management positions. And of course, these last almost six years now, I've been serving as Flint's mayor. Well, can you really call it six years? I mean, we've been in under emergency management for what, five and a half ago, right? Yeah, the, the authority of the position has changed. The salary's changed. But, yeah. uh, but I've stuck with it uh, through these difficult circumstances. And, and there's still a job for the mayor to do. Uh, when you look at whether it's crime or jobs or improving the water system, the mayor still has a responsibility of, of uh, bringing everybody to the table, uh, making sure that you know, all parts of the city are involved in the governance. And, and that's what I've tried to do, even when I've had limited authority with the state being in here. Uh, I've worked to create ways for the entire community to be involved. And of course, uh, my door's always open. You know, I have the Wednesday open office, and I've done everything that I could with the power that I have to serve the city. Talk to me about your qualifications. What assets do you bring to this yeah. next round of uh, leadership? Well, besides being in the position, which, which comes with um, a lot of advantages because I've been there and I haven't given up, I also have the professional management experience in the nonprofit, in the public, and even in the private sector. So I've worked at different levels of government. I've worked with nonprofit organizations. I've run my own management consulting company, 21st Century Performance. And, and I also have the higher education to really understand of the complicated issues that we're facing I did my bachelor's at Michigan State University and second degree at Oxford University. I have my master's in urban affairs from the University of London. And I did doctoral work in urban yeah. geography to really understand, you know, how does a, a mid-sized city like Flint in the Midwest uh, take advantage of opportunities for community and economic development in the 21st century? And how do you do that in a way that really gets the entire community involved? That's what I studied uh, when I was at the University of Minnesota. Well, you know, Flint has a plethora of problems. That's the word of the day, okay? How do you prioritize? Uh, which ones to handle first? Which ones to put on the back burner? Um, the consequences of that, I guess. Well, you have to have priorities, but you do have to work on multiple fronts. And I am committed to continuing to work to reduce the crime rate, uh, to improve our economy, and, and bring good paying jobs back to Flint. Uh, we need to improve our, our water system. Uh, we need to stabilize our neighborhoods. And we also need to do more to invest in our, in our families, and especially our youth. Uh, as mayor, we don't have control over the Flint schools or the charter schools oh, yeah, or yeah, education yeah. policy in Lansing. But you do have a responsibility to look at um, our youth and how they can have positive opportunities at our youth centers like Burston, uh, Haskell Center, which I opened the doors on after I was first elected. We're investing in the Literacy Coalition, uh, bringing community education back to Flint. Uh, so. I'm working on all of those areas. We have a strong, comprehensive plan in place, a city strategic plan. Uh, we're going to continue to drive down crime, improve the water system, uh, find funds to demolish the houses that, that need to be um, removed from our community and, and really bring that sense of vibrancy back to our neighborhoods. You touched briefly kind of on the water, and I know that's a big concern for, for many mm -hmm. uh, of voters here in the city of Flint. What's the priority there? Yeah, well, I, I'm concerned there, too. Uh, access to water is a basic human right, and Flint's water has to be 100% safe. That's the standard uh, that I've set out. And now that the emergency manager's gone, and you have myself and the city administrator and city council uh, with the RTAP's involvement <coughs> back making decisions, uh, we're taking a lot of steps to improve the water system. So the new carbon filter is going in. Uh, there's ongoing monitoring at the treatment plant. So that's improving the water uh, source quality. But then you have the aging pipe distribution system. And you have to understand that we've got to invest in both. So exercising valves, uh, 
detecting leaks, replacing pipes, all of those steps are outlined in our adopted capital improvement plan. And then we have to finish the Care County project uh, on budget, on time, so that we can shift to that secure, stable water supply in 2016. And throughout all of this, you know, we have to do everything we can to stabilize and bring down rates. And you saw in the first budget that I presented, after the emergency manager, we eliminated the 6% increase that had been scheduled for this July. We took $100 off the renter's deposit. Uh, we have to invest in the system, and we need resources for that, but we also need to make sure the rates are affordable for our citizens. Well, I mean, it seems weird to me that the, the way the city is set up now that you've got a, uh, a not an emergency manager, but a city manager. You've got an oversight commission. Mm -hmm. how, how do you plan on working with those two entities to accomplish this? Yes. And, and that is a big part of the mayor's job. Yeah. And I've been there and I have the experience with it. You know, I, I understand the community's concerns about the emergency manager and state oversight. I oppose those policies. Those were straight line Republican Party votes in Lansing that put those in place. Um, but once they were there, you know, I committed that I wasn't going to quit. I wasn't going to go away, no matter how tough it was, no matter how much I disagreed with the legislature or the governor, that I was going to stay and work on behalf of this community. And now that means working with the city administrator, that means working with the appointed transition uh, advisory board, and regardless of what each of our politics are, I think we've got to work on moving the entire community forward, and, and that's, that's what I'm committed to. I think you've seen from me that I, I'm going to communicate in a way uh, where I listen to everybody, I respect everybody. Uh, you take a look at some of the uh, behavior of my opponents in this race over these last few weeks and think of how that person might be received uh, by the governor's office or might be received by the White House with that, um, with that demeanor and that approach. Uh, I think you have to be willing to work with everybody to move the city forward and that's what I intend to do. Is Flint safer? now than it was or is it more violent? It, it, it's been very tough working out for public safety and we had the extraordinary spike in violent crime with the recession and over time we've been able to build new partnerships, uh, toughen up the enforcement and over the last two years now the crime rates dropped by double digits but that's not enough. I mean, we have to do a lot more to bring crime down uh, we have to keep the city lock up open. We really have to go after the gun crimes with the U.S. Attorney's Office because those illegal guns are just so dangerous uh, in our community. But we also have to build partnerships. Uh, the Blue Badge program has grown, the Chaplain Corps, the Citizens Radio Patrol. I'm committed to expanding those uh, over the next four years. And, and the other thing is we've got to have a comprehensive approach. It's not just about law enforcement. Uh, to reduce crime. We have to have our youth centers open. We need community education and we need to eliminate blight because if we don't get the abandoned houses down, get the weeds cut, and have a safe physical environment, then it's going to be very difficult to control uh, the criminal activity. So all of those things need to work together. I think we're making good progress. You're going to see a lot more of that in the next four years. Now the people that, that, that are, I guess, opposed to you, would kind of, they, they want you to fess up. So what, what's one of, what is the one, one of the things that you wish you could have done differently? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I go back to the two years I was in office before we had the, the appointment of the emergency manager. And, and my biggest disappointment was that I couldn't get an agreement from all of our unions on their, on their contract reductions because our AFSCME unions came to the table, but our other unions didn't. And then a year and a half later under emergency manager, they ended up seeing a cut that was twice as big as it, it would have been two years before. And I, I, I tried with everything I could to bring people to the table. Uh, I think it was just such a difficult time coming out of the recession. Uh, but now well, that, that's behind us. Uh, there are new contracts that are in place. Uh, we have a lot of other changes that were made at City Hall. And what I'm committed to is just trying to to, to move forward, but I definitely look back at that and I just wish there would have been some kind of way. Uh, another one is, I wish with the three years of negotiations that we could have found a way to afford uh, to stay on the Detroit water system while we went through this transition. So we didn't have to uh, deal with the challenges of, of a variable you know, Flint River water as a source. Uh, we worked and worked and worked on that. 
but we just couldn't get to a point. I mean, we had the governor in the room, we had uh, DWSD, we had myself, the county drain commissioner, the emergency manager at the time, but we just couldn't get to an agreement. And you saw the county stuck with Detroit, but they're getting double digit rate increases every year, and, and we just uh, can't afford that rate at this point. So um, I wish again that there was some way we could have done it, but it, it just, um, we just couldn't get there. All right, well, with a little bit of time you have left, a little less than a minute, I want you to go ahead and, and look right at the camera and convince yeah. people why they should vote yeah. for it. Well, you know, I have stuck with this community through some very difficult times, and I hope you'll stick with me over the next four years. Uh, we have tough elections coming up in August and November, uh, but you have my commitment that I'm going to continue to work hard for you. Uh, we're going to keep that budget balanced. We're going to keep citizens involved in the process. We're going to be transparent and accountable with everything that we do. Um, we are uh, also going to keep the door open at City Hall for you. Uh, I have my office open every Wednesday morning from 10 to noon. I've done that. Uh, throughout the entire time you've had me in this office. We're going to continue to solve your problems, focus on the issues that we need to move this city forward, and, and you have my commitment that when it comes to jobs, safety, water, our youth, that, that we are going to move forward as one community, and we're going to make Flint again a place where there's really opportunity for all, uh, just like many of us experienced in this community, we need to give that to the next generation. So I hope you'll uh, vote walling primary in November elections. You almost forgot about the primary, didn't you? <laughs> <Right. laughs> All right, guys. Hey, you're watching Meet the Candidates. I'm Paul Herring, and there'll be more.